Hey guys, and welcome back to another video for the Shopify Hydrogen app series. Um, I apologize if this video took so much time just to be put out there, but yeah, my excuse is just my studies are almost finished. And you know what that means? That means you'll have so many things to do. You have final project, you have thesis, and you have to look for internships, and you have to just look for places to go. So yeah, that's where I'm at now. But luckily, since I took a break, I was able to find internship. Uh, I finished the thesis um, project. Not, not the project, but like the document. I've been writing it, and I'm not proud of it honestly whatever it is what it is i'll try to fix that later this week but just that's just what happened okay that's just what i've been doing and that's why i can't be here online so i apologize if i was not able to um update the courses answer your emails or your q and a's i'm really 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 sorry i'll try to be back honestly it's not done yet my class is not finished it's going to be over this month july and next month, my internship is starting and I'll be moving to um, somewhere. But whatever, that's what we're going to um, discuss in the future. But for now, I just want to continue this um, series for you guys. Okay. Okay. So what we want to do in this video is to learn how to get data from our Shopify online store using Remix. But before we even start doing that, we need to open everything that we need. We need to open our VS Code, our code editor, and as well as our browser with localhost 3000. Also, don't forget to open your admin page, your Shopify online store admin page, because we're going to need to set up something in this video. Okay. So here in VS Code, I'm going to execute npm run dev here in my terminal because we still we haven't run or executed hydrogen um, start okay so i'm going to run that and that should give me the following localhost 3000 and everything should work awesome so what we need to do first is to understand how everything works. So when we built our project, the Shopify um, Hydrogen Sale I created or set it up everything that we need. So it created the Remix application, it created the configurations, and most important of all, it created our Shopify storefront client. So where can we find that storefront client? We can find that storefront client here in the server.js. So server.js is the main entry point of your Hydrogen app. This is where you'll find, like I said, your storefront client. So as you can see here, I have highlighted it already. So we are using the following function, create storefront client, and we're passing the following um, arguments. We have the cache, the wait until, the i18, and I'll, I'm going to explain this later on because later on in this video, we're going to get the country of our Shopify online store, just the basic way to get data from our um, Shopify online store. And we have the following storefront um, tokens public and then private we're getting that from our env file we have the storefront domain the domain name the api version and etc so when we created our storefront client you will have the the following methods that you will most likely used the query method or function as well as the mutate function so these two functions are the function that you're going to use to interact with your shopify online store using graphql and we're going to use that later on in this video so speaking of the language in the country, what is this i18n? So i18n is going to be used for the Shopify market to create multi-language um, storefront or hydrogen application. We're not going to go deep into this. What we want to do in this video is to learn how to get the language or the country of our Shopify online store using GraphQL. We're not going to create or we're not going to use this i18 and because by default it's set up to English as well as um, US as a country. Okay. So including in this server.js, you will also find how you approach um, session implementations. So currently it's using, by default, it's using cookie-based implementation to set up your sessions. If you want to change this, if you if you know sessions, if you know how to set up sessions, you can change this when whatever you want in whatever approach you want to um, take. 
but we'll just leave it as is. I just wanna introduce to you the server.js because this is the main entry point of your hydrogen application. So with all that being said, let's start getting information or let's start getting the contour of our Shopping Online store using GraphQL. So what you wanna do first is to open your app. This is the Remix app. And inside of this folder, you will find the entry.client, the entry.server, the root, and the routes. So your focus here is the routes and then the root.jsx so the root.jsx is the main entry point but not the hydrogen but the remix app so the root is the main entry point of your remix app okay not by the hydrogen app so it goes like this first is the server.js and then it goes to the app the remix app to set up your client okay so in this root.jsx you will find the loader that we're going to use to create queries. And then after the loader, it will render your application, but you can also use use loader data to get whatever you returned in the loader function. So we're going to customize this later on to get the country of our Shopify online store. So first of all, before we begin, let's just get rid of the heading title one, as well as the paragraph tag because we don't honestly need that we're going to create a new component later and we'll just display the country of our Shopify online store so if we save this it should get rid of that hello hydrogen um, online store as well as the paragraph tag okay so the next thing you want to do is to create a new component inside of your components folder if you don't have a components folder you can create that by right-clicking inside of your app folder and create a new folder and then make sure that you name it components, plural, okay? And then inside of the components, create a new file and we'll call it language or let's just call it country bar.jsx. And then we're going to use React. Um, also, we're going to export this. So export default and then this is going to be a function component and we'll call it country bar. And then... I also want to pass here something like the country code. Okay, let's just pass here country. And then we're going to return an HTML code. And this is going to be a div. And then the class name, we'll set it to country or let's call it top bar. And then inside of this div, we're going to create a span. And then we'll just create here an image. And then for the SRC, I do have here a code that I can just copy. And you will find this code also in the description below. So you can copy this as well. So let me just copy this and paste it here because it contains a URL to display a flag, okay? So let me just get rid of the alt attribute. I don't need that. So currently it's using England's um, flag, but we can change that to US for now, okay? Later on, we're going to dynamically change this by using the country um, variable here. So let's just save this and then let's go back to the root.jsx and then inside of the body, we're going to import that country.jsx. So create the component country bar and that should automatically import your component here at the very top. So you'll find here the country bar, okay? So now if we save this, you should find here your flag. So let's just go back here inside of the app folder and you will find here a folder called styles. Open that and open the app.css. So let's just scroll all the way up and let's just do the styling right here. Or you know what? Let's just do it at the very bottom. The class is called top bar. And then the styles that we want to do is we need to set the overflow to hidden. And also we need to set the background color to white. And we need to give this a padding and we'll set it to 12 px and also we need to set the display to flex and its direction to um, not flex direction and then we'll set it to row and then we can use a gap and we'll set it to one rem like so 
Okay, so let's just save this. And that should update our styles. And also we can also add something like uh, justify content and we'll set that to space between. Okay, so I'm not going to waste your time with the stylings. Let's just close this and continue here inside of our root.jsx. So how can we get the country of our Shopify online store? We can get the country using the context storefront query method or function, and then we can create a new layout query. So what is the value of the layout query? You'll find that here at the very bottom. And as you can see, we are using a GraphQL query. So let's just create a separate query. So constant, and this time I'm going to call this country query. We can just use backtick symbol so we can use multi-aligned um, strings. And first is, make sure that you call it GraphQL as well. And then underneath, we'll create a query. You don't need to um, name your query to layout or country. It doesn't really matter. It's still going to work regardless of whether there is a name or not. So you can just call it query like so. But if you want to follow along or if you want to just do whatever um, Shopify is doing, you can just type here country. I don't know why I've been following that. <laughs> but yeah, let's just continue. Query and then the name of your query, we'll call it country. And then the country, um, the query that we want to do is the localization. And inside of the localization, there is what we call available countries. It's going to be plural. And then inside of the available countries, you can get the ISO code as well as the name of the country. So now that we have the country query, we can use this like how we use the layout query. So we can create a new variable and we'll call it country and we'll use await and then the context that storefront and then the query method and this time we're going to use the country query that we created underneath okay so now that we have the country we can return that by including it inside of the object that it's returning okay so layout we can just add a comma and then include the country um, variable so now we can access the country inside of the data so currently it's using data.layout, but now we can also use data.country because we returned the following country, okay? So let's just, for example, console.log first, whatever is inside of the data.country. So if I save that, notice that I have now the following object, localization and then available countries. It's working. So now, what you want to do is create a new variable and make sure that inside of the curly braces, you call the localization because we need to get the localization object inside of the data.country. If you don't include it inside of curly braces, it's not going to work. So make sure that you wrap the localization with curly braces, okay? So equals data.country. So now we can return the localization here or pass the localization and now we should have the available countries and the iso code and then the name awesome so we can get the iso code so how can we do that we can pass it here to this component country bar and we'll call it country because if we go back to the country bar we call the um property the props um country okay so make sure that you name it did I name it properly? Country, okay, country. And then we'll pass the value of available country. So localization dot available countries, available countries, like so. And then we can save this and then go back to the country bar JSX. And then we can map it, okay? So here in the top bar, I'm going to create a set of curly braces and then I can say country.map to make a loop. And then for each country, you know what, let's just make it plural. I'll call it countries. And then here, make sure they change this to countries, okay? Save that and then go back here. And then we'll use countries instead of country. 
So countries that map, and then we'll get the current country, and then we can return a span. So span, and this is not going to work. We need to return a set of parentheses instead of curly braces. Okay, so span, and then we need to copy this image right here. Let's just move it inside of the span like so okay let me just indent this properly like so and get rid of this remaining span so now if we save this we should only have one here okay so we get an error so check the top level render call div um we are returning a div we need to pass a key i forgot about that so here in the span we need to pass a key and we also need to create index here and just pass here the index okay and that should work awesome so let's just refresh that and it's still working so now we can use the country as the country dot iso code so what you want to do is we need to pass that here in this url but we need to interpolate it. So how can we interpolate that? Instead of double quotes, we're going to use backtick symbol. But notice that it's currently red. So what you want to do is to wrap it with um, curly braces, like so. You need to wrap it like so. So now we can get rid of the US and just pass here a set of curly braces with dollar sign and pass here the variable country dot and then the ISO code. So country dot ISO code. So now if you save this, notice that the flag changed. Now it's friends. Awesome. So that's how you get the country of your Shopify online store. But how can we change this flag? We can change this flag inside of our um, admin page. If you go to the admin page, you can open your settings and then open your Shopify markets. It should be inside of your markets, right over here, underneath of the gift cards. Open the markets and you can change your primary market to something else. So let's just click manage. And then I'm going to click the edit. And instead of France, let's change that to um, Netherlands. Save. And now if we reload our online store, it's still set to France, which is weird. It should have updated. It's still currently set to French, which is um, a bit weird. So let me just reload my hydrogen app npm run dev okay and there you go as you can see now it's changed to um netherlands so whenever you change something to your um admin or to your settings make sure that you reload also your hydrogen cli okay so that's pretty much it if you want to display more countries what you want to have to do is to create another market and then set up your shipping rates um you can do that if you want but that's pretty much it that's how you get the countries of your shopify online store using graphql now in the next lesson we're going to learn how to install Tailwind CSS to our hydrogen application that way we can easily display or we can easily design our hydrogen online store. I'll see you there.